this is great that I can finally publish the easy way on YouTube. Just uh, walk it in with my tongue here. Here's the hi highlight. I, uh, my book, uh, when it gets up to about the 30th page, it's a scientific rap that birth date is worth paying attention to because, uh, you know, some, like I laid on you already, phase angle that we've evolved to respond to with the systematic differences in our ways of dealing with systematic differences in the environment with respect to the sun. So, here comes then I say, now that we've learned the science of it, let's look at astrology in particular. Consider the birthday phenomenon in terms of the signs of what I call classic astrology. The way of complete understanding of human nature is to become familiar with the characteristic natures of each of the 365 birth dates. Now that's interesting, I can just point out in passing that at that point I was trying to be so scientific that instead of saying birthday, I always said birth date. But to tell you the truth, it's a mistake because I wasn't stressing the importance of one year with respect to another year particularly, but more particularly just the difference within the year. So birthday would have been scientifically a, fair, a, a more accurate uh, way of going at it. <laughs> It is only natural for the reader to skip ahead and check out his or her own birthday's description, and perhaps the descriptions of one or two closely related others. But then the idea is to start from the beginning and read them all through. So that's my plead to the reader. <laughs> Come on, read them all because I'm trying to describe human nature. That is the reason for the unusual order of the descriptions as an aid to the reader's mastery of the signs. Although it seems easier to read a description if one has a particular individual in mind of such a birthday, in the long run it may be better to consider each description at first with a clear open mind as describing a large number of people out there in the social universe and to wonder freely about the human forms taken by these different basic approaches to life. Although the 12 months of the year might have been used to group birthdays for study and description, the 12 divisions of classic astrology were chosen as a useful beginning for a study of the phenomena, oops, phenomenal significance of birthday for these two reasons. For one, there is the accumulated wisdom of thousands of years' observations of individuals in terms of birthday that one can thereby have access to in the literature. But more important, there seems to be real physiological significance to the time divisions of the astrological groupings which coincide with the seasons. Not only are the time divisions of the twelve signs useful, because of their coinciding with the four seasons. But there are dramatic differences in human characteristics to be observed among the different thirds of each season indicated by the signs. For example, Leo, denoting the middle third of summer, tend to be liars, though of course there are some wonderful exceptions while the adjacent earlier group of birthdays corresponding to the astrological group Cancer tend to have a natural predisposition toward truth-telling, truth as also do the group next after Leo corresponding to Virgo. Thus, there are apparently some actual physiological thresholds associated with these ancient divisions of time. Along with my own descriptions of the characteristics of the 12 birthday groups, which are mainly the result of observing and interviewing thousands of individuals over the course of several years, I have included some examples of descriptions from the astrological literature. Thus, the reader can compare them with my own conclusions as affording some perspective and occasionally an antidote to the critical things I say about some birthdays in contrast to the typically patronizing style of astrology. Also, the reader can see how similar are the astrological descriptions by the different authors to each other. Probably because they are not in touch with the actual causes of the traits 
astrological writers tend not to stray much from the beaten path, although occasionally one comes across some fresh and useful insights. My own descriptions try to provide the reader with a basic understanding of the causes of the traits, the underlying mechanisms of character that will eventually provide the reader with the basis for making further useful observations. Particularly, my emphasis, in term, my emphasis is in terms of understanding how people think, how their different approaches to dealing with the pain and wrong in the world compare. This, I believe, to be the most important single problem of our age, and birthday provides crucial needed insight with which we may finally comprehend the full variety of human points of view. Is this more? What? You got more? No, that's it. That's the thing with the introduction. Then what I do in the book is consider a sign. This one I start off with is Aries. And after Aries I take the next one, April, I go to May. And then I do uh, something different. I say, now, let's, now that we got a sense of what April and May are about, let's go back to March and see how that compares with April and May. That's the little lesson I propose in the, my introduction to the 12 signs. And what it comes down to is April is adventurous. They, they start where there's a chill in the air that is conquered by the child struggling and while you're at it things are getting better outside so no matter what it does it's there's some measure of success encouraging confidence and then the next one over the people born in a later april and may those people have the advantage of it starting out warmer and better and nicer and still getting better So those people are even more secure in their um, confidence about the way their nervous system is set up is a good way. You're, if you're born when it's good and gets better, then your instincts basically should be um, acknowledged by the group of people you're in as the ones to carry the day. Like, let's, every, let's do it your way because you're so happy about it and it must be a good way. My understanding of human nature does come down to some simple propositions like that, actually. Happy is uh, Taurus. And that's the key to Taurus, happy. That to be born happy. And to compare the rest of our miserable existences to people <laughs> who are born happy. I am proposing we redesign our society. It is pretty ambitious. I'm proposing we take a, a kind of a biblical view of the situation and uh, thank God for uh, sparing us burning up that we came to our senses before the big blow up, that we didn't need any weapons of mass destruction as an uh, alternative to the impending doom of capitalism of its own. What a bad name for capitalism. Why don't we just blow them up with some nukes? <laughs> So that at least we can have capitalism in Europe and Japan and Asia. Why don't we just burn up America? And the Bible would say, yeah, they're supposed to, they were an evil empire. They're supposed to burn up. Some guy got a suitcase with a nuke in uh, Chicago. Uh, and there's another one in Grand Central Station in some locker. And uh, San Francisco, Boston, we've knocked off the top ten American cities, including vaporizing D.C. Uh, yeah, that cheerful thought. So, um, hey, here it is, a, a sensible alternative to everything burning up. We understand birthday. We develop a confidence in our understanding of human nature. And what we learn about April, incidentally, to cut to the chase, is they have wonderful ideas and they don't get enough of a listening to. They have the advantages that we should uh, listen to a lot more. Another Joe Friendly... Does that other Joe Friendly get in? <laughs> That's my phone.